You're listening to the Totally Indian Football Show by Humans of Indian Football. Well, Olympics is going on and it is the buzz and it is something that has got all of us hooked on to our screens or probably to our phone screens. Uh, watching all the action for the, from the Indian contingent, we only wish them well for all the games and all that's uh, there. And we also got the first medal on the first day itself by Mirabai Chanu. So uh, it's great going and we look forward to the entire tournament that's going to happen. Uh, it'll go on till the 8th of August. But today we're going to speak about uh, Indian football and specifically with regards to Indian women's football. Well, aren't we all excited because it's like less than six months we will be hosting a very big tournament for the women's uh, senior women's action. We'll see them in action in the month of January. And I think it was this early this month that uh, earlier this month that the logo was revealed and the venues were revealed. Uh, so everybody was celebrating, going gaga about it. Uh, but hey, guess, you know what? Uh, I don't think the panel on this show is very excited about or ecstatic about that fact. You will know for sure. And uh, why is that so? Because we already know that uh, the IWL, Indian Women's League, has been cancelled. And we haven't seen a women in action for this season, for this year. So you can just imagine them going into a big tournament with no game time. So that's something crazy. And that's something we're going to speak about in detail. So we have... Janisha and Abreshmina today on the show. Welcome to each one of you who are listening. This is episode number 20 of the Totally Indian Football Show. I'm your host, Siju. Jenny, I'm going to directly start this. Uh, Abreshmina was on the show of Injury Time as well, and we probably caught up with that show as well, uh, where they spoke about this in detail. So I'll come to you, Jenny, first. Let the rant begin. What are your initial thoughts, uh, your reaction to this whole aspect? Hi, Siju. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Um, I, I'm still fuming about, uh, you know, the fact that the Indian Women's League will not be happening this year. And and this is something that has not even been announced, not even been conveyed properly. This has been completely brushed under the rugs. Um, and the Federation has, you know, been telling us that the league is postponed, it's postponed, it's postponed. But we thought maybe it, it is postponed uh by a couple of months or maybe a few more months but we never expected it to you know get postponed by a year uh it has been postponed to somewhere between march uh to may 2022 that also now we don't know when exactly it will happen it's again a tentative uh time frame that they've given um so this whole thing you know it just shows the lack of interest of the federation towards women's football in general it, it, it only goes on to prove that it is just a tick box exercise for them. That's what we are seeing. Um, even though there is a lot of uh, uh, hype around the uh, two big tournaments that we will be hosting next year. That's all that we are seeing. We are only seeing the promotional activities going on or, or, the, or the promotional uh, posts for uh, both the, you know, the 2022 AFC Women's Age. Uh, there's been a lot of talk going around those. but what is more important than that is, you know, a league happening uh, this year. So it is because basically it is from the league. Uh, it is from the Indian Women's League and from the senior nationals that usually the squad is selected for the senior national team. Now that we don't have anything happening this year, nobody knows from where the squad is going to be selected. Um, the national team uh, camp assembled in December uh, last year. Uh, and they had uh, some training sessions and then a few friendlies uh, in April, uh, if I'm not wrong. And after that, no action at all. Um, and now all, all the players are back home. Uh, some of them are training, some of them are not. Some of them don't have the facilities to train at home. Uh, and even if those who have, you know, it, it is nowhere in comparison to what they'll be getting in the national team. So... We don't know how their form is right now, how their fitness is right now. And in six months, uh, we are going to, you know, be representing the country in a nation cup. So it, it is bad. Whatever is happening is bad. Um, that's the note I would like to start off with. Okay. 
I think Abhishekna, you've we've already heard you speak on the injury time, as I mentioned. So I'm not going to ask you for your initial thoughts, but this, but something as an extension of the point that you made that uh, I think you said very, uh, you know, to to you expressed your emotion in this one word, like an embarrassment. That's what that's what if if I recall it right, that's what you said. Uh, but can I ask you, who is it embarrassing? I mean, who is it? Who is embarrassed with this? Because I don't see, I don't think the Federation is embarrassed about it because they're all going gaga and everyone who's working towards it, who's got the venue, like Ma, it's going to happen in Maharashtra in three places. And everybody's like so ecstatic about the whole fact that they're going to host it. And, you know, India is going to play in this, the international tournament. Uh, hey, woohoo, her game too. Uh, all the hashtags and new hashtags will they'll they'll come back. So, who's it embarrassing for? Because I don't see the federation taking any. I mean, they don't even care. It's actually embarrassing for the people who really care about the women's game, honestly. Because uh, as people who follow the game regularly, we. Uh, kind of like I don't think anybody was very uh, excited uh, about the fact that we were going to host a tournament because uh, we have seen what happens uh, even after we host a tournament which was the men's under 17 world cup like it like how much difference did it actually make to the local system I don't see much happening so yeah I mean I'm not sure if uh, people who actually understand what's going on in the industry were too happy about us getting another tournament because uh, at the end of the day if we see any uh, country which has developed the women's game it's like Jenny mentioned it's through the league you know it's through the league it's when women get regular games it's not about one tournament or another tournament it's about giving people regular games and until unless you do that I mean I don't see how you really care about the women's game or you really want to develop the women's game it's all just uh, words right and I think adding to the misery it was uh, the resignation from Mamal Rocky, the coach of the national women's team. And I mean, we can all assume the, or play the guessing game, you know, as I tweeted that if she resigned or if it was actually the Federation asking to step down, because we all know how obsessed we are with uh, overseas coaches just ahead of uh, an international tournament. So, uh, Abrishman, I would, like, I, I would like to ask you if you were able to get in touch with Mamal you know, speaking regarding about this or anyone from the Federation uh, to talk more about this or get their views, especially if you got in touch with Memol, please let us know if you can. Uh, I plan to. I've been like really worked. Uh, I've been under a pile of work due to the Olympics. But uh, I mean, I did drop her a message, so she didn't really respond to that. But I would probably give her a call or something let's see what she comes up with but yeah I mean like you mentioned it, it's it'll all be down to the guessing game because yes uh, I'm pretty sure the the next uh, coach that we're going to have will be a foreign coach but only because we're going in a continental tournament Jenny I want to ask you in that case why don't we just uh, pick 11 uh, or whatever the squad number that we need is also foreign players and ask them to play for you know in the Indian team jersey because uh, because of our obsession with overseas guys uh, no I mean with all due respect to all of them who have come down and worked in men's and women's football in India but uh, our obsession with them just doesn't get over right uh, your thoughts on Memo stepping down We'll never know if, uh, you know, she resigned or if she was forced to resign. Uh, <laughs> that is something we'll have to keep guessing uh, uh, forever. Uh, but it's it's very unfortunate. Even, I mean, uh, even if it is something she did on her own, it, it is very unfortunate given that we are six months away from uh, the Asian Cup. Um, but what's even more disheartening is that the assistant coach is still there. I have this, uh, you know, I, I've been complaining about this for quite some time. Uh, the assistant coach has had a lot of complaints on her. Uh, a lot of uh, players complain. And even the boycott that happened uh, um, a couple of years back, uh, that also happened because, primarily because of the assistant coach. So there's been, there have been a lot of complaints against her, uh, but she's still there. But the one who was doing really good, the, the head coach, she has stepped down and we don't know who will be next so if if it is a foreign coach again 
it is going to be very difficult for the foreign coach because uh, Maymol at least she knew the players she knew them she knew how they would play she knew all the players um, even though we don't have a league this time at least to a certain extent she would be able to um, understand how the, the, our players are but if we bring a foreign coach now the the coach will have to start from scratch right so the coach will definitely not know everybody um, and it is very difficult to prepare um, you know for such a big tournament um, in, in this short span and we are hearing that uh, the national team there'll be a national team camp uh, starting next month we're just hardly a week away so i don't know um, it, it's all uh, very uh, very very strange and uh, we'll have to you know just wait and see how it goes okay so uh, abrishmana how how do you rate uh, i mean she memo has been there since the start if i'm not wrong for the women's team so how do you rate her uh, as a coach overall with what she's done with with our squad see she's been decent she's been good uh, i do think that she has uh, brought in a lot of good players and she uh, she's put uh, uh, quite a lot of focus on the fitness bit as well uh, which we see with uh, f- quite a few women athlete uh, women footballers but uh, yeah i mean overall as a tactician maybe i'm not a very big fan of uh, memol uh, i do feel that uh, she kind of lacked uh, astuteness or uh, you know just the ability to make changes according to what is going on in the game sometimes uh, but uh, in terms of the influence she's had on the game in the past 3 uh, years or something uh, i do think that she's done the national team quite a lot of good jenny your thoughts on memol as a coach how was she um as second what uh, abrish meena just said um, in addition to that there were a lot of young players that she uh, she brought in right For, to whom she gave a lot of chance uh, to many young uh players and also uh like uh, abby just said uh, she had a lot of influence on the players and uh, after talking to a few players uh after she resigned they are genuinely disappointed uh you know not because they are without a head coach but because you know it, it is maymol they had a lot of respect uh, for her and she was um uh, some say that she was very caring uh and you know she was someone more than just a coach um uh, you know a very friendly a very caring person so uh, that is something i think the players that is also something the players will be missing but overall i find her to be a a decent coach yeah i think that that's a great point that you added jenny i feel uh, i haven't spoken to coach memol or the players personally but i just feel that what you said is quite right that uh she could be a friend like or a sister you know to to many of the young players because as compared to the men's football women's football players are still uh getting out there to you know probably they could uh, be easily intimidated around people uh, around senior players around the star the star names that we are that's there in the national squad so i'm sure they were they got very comfortable around coach memo also the duration that she was there so that aspect will definitely uh would take a hit for a new coach to build that rapport with the players so i think it's only i mean waiting game that we have to play to see that around uh but abreshmana i think the only two players probably who would have got ma- the more the maximum game time this season uh would have been two players like dalima chabar and uh, or abala devi who have played uh, outside the country for cl- different clubs respectively so uh, how do you see and they would be i'm assuming two key players for the national team uh, going into this tournament uh, how do you see that coming because considering all the others haven't got enough game time and then these two who have got the game time so let's rate them a little above than the others uh, so how do you see that team forming coming up you know uh, the comfort level and the whole playing style there there's a lot of catch up game for the other girls to do Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Dalima has uh, played a lot. Uh, she was with a with a university team, but I'm not sure how many games they have had uh, because of COVID. Uh, but uh, Bala definitely. I think uh, her experience with Rangers would a- should actually do a lot of good to the rest of the team. 
because um, she i feel what bala took the most out of that rangers experience is the physicality bit of it and that is something that uh, where we really need to work because uh, if we see in the friendlies also uh like towards the end of the games we would get tired and we would just hoof the ball around so i think uh the physicality bit of a uh, bit is something that bala is going to bring to the team because uh i mean we've all also seen uh, her uh, quite quite a lot of her uh, fitness routines uh on her instagram she keeps posting them so uh you do see how much she's worked on her physicality you do see that in her build as well uh and then of course just playing with uh, you know players who are who get who play regularly who have a sort of a better understanding of the game kind of helps you grow as a player so yes i personally i just feel, i feel uh, bala's experience particularly is going to be uh, very beneficial for the team jenny now we had you know we were working on uh, or looking forward to seeing the iwl happen because there were qualifiers happening from every state uh most of the states and then it got cancelled because again the rise in cases and stuff like that uh could you just if you can uh, the amount of that you followed across uh, from the states qualifiers if you can take us through what really happened there uh and uh, you know do you think you know we've literally lost out a season to see some really good performances by teams and some players if you can just tell us about that yeah uh, i mean this 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 year um it was not just about iwl there was a bigger target you know a big a bigger trophy i would say uh, uh, awaiting um the girls which was uh, basically the uh, what, what is it called asian asian cup i keep i keep getting confused between the women's asian cup and the women's club championship so yeah so whoever wins uh, this uh, year's iwl they you know would be the ones representing the country in the women's club championship so that was uh, something uh, you know what many teams were looking forward to no it was not just about winning the league it was more about representing the country as well um i cannot talk for all the other states but uh my points will be more from the south uh, primarily from tamil nadu and pondicherry I'll, i'll take you through what happened here so in tamil nadu we had um the tamil nadu women's league and uh, sedu fc won it and they qualified for the iwl uh, and they seemed prepared you know or, or or i would say they had more intent from the twl itself although the twl was very short and i'm still not very happy with the way the twl happened but um, if you take the sedu fc squad they had a couple of players from other states for the twl itself not because they were not sure of you know uh, winning it but because they wanted to give those new girls as well more game time so that is how they were preparing they were already you know re- uh, ready uh, for this uh, league their preparations were uh, uh you know uh, more intense than how it used to be and uh, even after the state leagues happened uh, you know sedu and even the pondicherry team uh, they all had actually met all the criteria and they should have uh, um, been given a direct entry to the iwl but they were put through the qualifiers which was not fair but then again uh coming to sedu fc they didn't com- they, they didn't complain a lot about it although they were disappointed and it also came with an additional expense for them uh they took it as a uh, you know an opportunity to give the girls more game time and more uh, training going uh, into the the main uh, uh, iwl so they were ready they went to uh, delhi for the qualifiers but unfortunately on their way when they were in the flight the news was announced they came out that the qualifiers has been postponed so that was very very disappointing because the girls had just landed and they got the news and they had to come back uh, the very same day so this is something uh, it, that happened not just for sedu fc there were other teams as well that were traveling to delhi for the qualifiers Uh, some of them did not have any state leagues but still you know the, some of these teams were uh, uh, participating this time there were more teams there that showed interest uh, in participation because there was a, 
a bigger uh, um, target you know ahead and also uh, if, if you see uh, we talk a lot about uh, not having enough investment in women's football but look at the state of those who invested already so take sedu fc for that matter or take the organizers of the pondicherry women's league in pondicherry the league that happened it happened over a period of 39 days and there were six teams that played 10 games each and it was very very properly organized each team had enough rest before their next game and the whole league was also uh, tele- i mean there was a live streaming done on youtube for the whole league so it was so well planned and well organized but at the end of it they did not get a direct entry into iwl they also had to go through the qualifiers now to go through the qualifiers uh they did not have enough uh, you know sponsors i mean they did not have any sponsors at all for the qualifiers as such and they could not afford to pay for the flight tickets of the players so they uh, withdrew uh, you know even before the qualifiers started uh, because uh, they had to travel by train uh, and that was not really very safe at that point because of the covid cases rising but the whole league that was organized was organized with the iwl in mind now look at them they have spent a lot uh, the pondicherry fa had spent a lot for this but at the end of it they get nothing all they wanted was a chance to participate in the iwl where you know where, where the whole country watches um, their team as well play there whether they win it or not is secondary but you know it it gives the girls a bigger platform that is what they had in mind when they organized the whole thing but that did not happen now look coming back to say the sc uh, they won twl and then after they traveled all the way to delhi this whole thing got the, the qualifiers itself got postponed and now take into account all the flight expenses if they had played iwl qualifiers there at least it would it would have made sense to you know make all those uh, spending but now everything has gone down the drain you know they, they just flew all the way to delhi and then came back for, for nothing as such it is very difficult for these people to run these clubs because there are hardly any sponsors and when all these happen it makes the whole thing difficult for you know even others who are interested and who would like to invest and it's worse for those who are already in it 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 kind of, it's kind of very discouraging for them so next time when some when some announcement comes we don't know if they'll be taking it up so seriously as they took it a few months back so even if a league is organized next time or if if, if it's organized i mean uh, they say it will be in march to may 2022 so at that time i don't know if the same seriousness will be there if the same intent will be there because what if they again postpone it or what if they again cancel it so is it worth putting all the money into it is it worth putting all the effort into it so that will be the question on, in their mind so it kind of destroys the whole purpose so like i said um, for the, for the federation the women's football is just a tick box exercise but it is not the same for for the others who are passionate about uh, women's football they uh, spend a lot of their time and energy into it they uh, spend a lot of uh, um there's a lot of you know uh, desire that goes into it you know a lot of dreams are there so when it is cancelled when you know when something like this happens it destroys all their dreams and we also recently uh, there was a letter from uh, from hans football club to the president of uh, the delhi fa you know it it was very emotional um, because they don't know if next time they will win the league or not uh, win the delhi uh, you know the state league and now they have lost a chance to participate uh, in in IWL so that's the case with almost all the other uh, clubs as well or all the other teams as well who have qualified from their respective states so all the players all the team owners all the team you know people associated with the teams everyone had this one thing in mind about the about playing in the league and also since now it has a bigger uh, uh you know a reward so those were all in their minds and everything has been destroyed so this is kind of demotivating for everyone in general now with uh, them losing g- the game time as well that they normally get from the league so a couple of days back uh, in, in an interview bala devi you know she was saying that the league by itself is just three weeks so okay we can just round it off to a month so th- there'll be a month's training before that so that's all the game time the girls get now even that is not there so 
overall it it is it, it is very it is very demotivating for those who are in it and that kind of kind of uh, brings down the interest of those who are passionate itself so imagine those who are not that passionate it kind of keeps them away from you know the, the uh, women's football itself just to add to what jenny said i mean the whole confusion about the process of qualification to the final round of the IWL in itself i feel demotivates everyone uh, during this time i mean there was so much confusion about how which state team qualifies for the final round and which doesn't that it just makes you know every state association or every club involved feel like uh, we don't know what is going to happen so where, why are we putting all this effort into you know putting up a team playing a league it just becomes really tedious for everyone without any sort of understanding of where we will go after this so i mean time and again this whole conversation has been about uh, how there needs to be some sort of structure some sort of structure and i just hosting big t- ticket tournaments is not going to automatically create a structure you have to create it from the ground up so it just like what jenny mentioned i mean i also spoke to uh, mariyappan after uh, the pondicherry league thing and he was very disappointed because i mean the amount of money that people who are really passionate about women's game put in their teams or put in organizing something or holding t- something it's it's massive and they know that they're not going to get too much return but if they don't even get the bare minimum why are they do- doing all of this so yeah i like completely what uh, jenny said it's just demotivating for everyone in general and in addition to that it demotivates the organizers of the state leagues itself because the women's uh, you know the women's committee in every state by itself is not that uh, uh you know uh, boosted or it's not that supported uh, in every state association so there itself it's a very big struggle and when all these happens there's a immediate question from the others in the state uh, associations of the need to organize a state league in the first place and then take a team uh, you know ahead so it, it, so if there is a lot of pressure then we might even see uh you know some of the states stopping to conduct these leagues as well going forward so that is even more uh that will be even that will be sadder if something like that happens but we can we can, just cannot rule out those chances given the current uh, scenario i think this is exactly why i wanted the two of you on the show you know that detailed in depth pure unadulterated conversation that you all just took us through uh, it just gave us the whole i think i'm sure the listeners who've tuned in uh it gave them uh, a lot of lesson to understand where we stand as women's football in this country you know it just boils down to creating hashtags i mean i'm going to probably name the show is it really her game too uh cuz that's one of the hashtags that they keep using or another you know, things like she power and there'll be new more invented now as we will be hosting two big tournaments next year but with even even the under 17 world cup right uh since it got postponed now it's again starting from scratch to to get those players and stuff for that so what abrishna can you i mean i'm digressing into the under 17 uh, world cup update but is there anything that we know what's happening there because this current situation i don't think anybody is scouting anywhere because nobody is playing so where does that leave us if we host the tournament and if we have to group regroup a new set of players exactly i mean there's nothing really happening on the under 17 world cup front um they w- they apparently said that they wanted to scout because obviously they needed new players uh, after the cancellation and then getting another uh, under 17 world cup so yeah they wanted obviously they had to go for almost an entirely new team because uh, almost all the players in the previous team were like bang on the age criteria so they obviously need almost a whole different team and uh, yeah i mean i do understand the fact that obviously there are no real there's no sort of games happening or anything so that makes it difficult to pick a team but i'm not sure if games were really happening a lot even when you pick the first lot of the under 17 world cup team so if you're looking at hosting a fifa tournament next year um you need to give any set of girls that you get 
good amount of time to adjust to whatever style of game that you're going to make them play give them game time give them some sort of confidence yeah i mean even before uh, even when the previous uh, edition of the under 17 women's world cup was going to be held uh, the girls actually i think the team was made like a year back or something and uh, then they had like a couple of uh, exposure to games but apart from that they didn't have too many games even then and this time around with all the covid situation and everything uh, it's going to be like we can't be doing things because it's covid but i mean if you're going to host a tournament at the end of the day you have to make some sort of effort to find a way around it find some solution around it uh, of all the you know uh, the video aff meeting uh, reports that we've got there's been no conversation about the under 17 world cup so i mean are you even looking at it or what is happening i mean this is just nothing really happening from what i know um there are a set of players who have been selected um and they will be called up for a national team camp but how they were selected on what what basis we'll never know and also in what form they are if they are really fit right now that also something that we'll not know we'll know only after the camp starts but they have selected uh, uh, a team you know um, a list of probables uh, have been circulated is what i'm hearing um, who are all in that i have no idea but uh, there are some players who have been shortlisted uh, for the national team camp preparation i mean for the, for the under 17 world cup preparation okay interesting that is and uh, since jenny you mentioned the club championship earlier right and how every team or every player was looking for much for much more than an I, just an iwl trophy uh, it is also to play in this club championship now that the iwl didn't happen we've gone back to yeah, last year last season's uh, winners gokulam kerala fc who has been nominated to play in this tournament uh abrishma your thoughts on that because that's again a big tournament and uh, it is again like representing our representing our country uh how difficult it is going to be for this club because i think if i've heard it right most of the their own players have dispersed and they, they don't know if they still hold their contracts with the club so how difficult it is going to be for even for gkfc to put up a team now for this uh, tournament um yeah i'm pretty sure that most of them would not be under contract because usually what happens in the iwl is you just give away contracts for the you know for the tournament only so i'm pretty sure most of them would not have the contracts but i also feel that uh, where gkfc is standing right now they are very well they are very much capable of uh, getting at least among the indian players they are very much capable of getting the players that they want uh, because uh, they obviously are going to go for the club championship so i'm pretty sure because most of the girls have not had any game time so i mean they would jump at the opportunity to be in that team and at least have some game or go for the club championship which is obviously a huge thing so yeah i'm pretty sure gkc is at this point in time is capable of uh, picking up whoever they want to but uh, how much time the team will have together and how much preparation they'd be able to make before the championship is something that has that will need to be looked at by the club so yeah i mean but in terms of uh, putting up a team uh, i don't think they should have much difficulty in signing players now jenny i think uh, we coming to almost the close of the show i want to ask you uh the fact that where does this all leave or rather i'll keep that part uh towards the end and i want to ask you this now uh as much as you followed women's football okay what do you think you know where do you see women's football standing in our country with all of this uh right now if the same thing continues we'll be left only with hashtags and not women's football beautiful that's going to be my i mean i'm going to take this clip and you know slap it out there i think this is this needs to be the headline <laughs> uh look 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 at all those hashtags kick off the dream um indian football forward together how are we doing all these are we doing really anything that even justifies this these hashtags we are re- literally doing nothing the federation is only doing pr and nothing in action you do something and do enough pr who nobody is going to question you but that is not what is happening um i, I think last week after fans started outraging about 
IWL not happening in the country. The very next day, there were so many posts on women's football from AFF handle and we were all, uh, it was something, no, we were not even happy looking at those because it just looked like something to cover up whatever uh, had come out, you know, just to make uh, people happy and just to uh, uh, tell, tell the world out there that they are doing something while they're actually not. There's nothing being done. What has to be done is not being done. There's only uh, th- there's only PR uh, work going on and literally no action. Players don't know what, uh, you know, you know uh, you know wh- what's gonna happen, or who will be picked, or what it's going to be like uh, for the next uh, six months. And it's all so you know, uh, the, the, there's no clear path ahead. When there's no, no clear path ahead, there, and there is no plan ahead, and there is completely no structure, and an even more worse calendar. You know, I don't know. We have, we'll only be left with hashtags. Do we even have a calendar? <laughs> <laughs> That's what. Yeah, Avreshmana, now I want to ask you that where uh, similar question to you as well, your thoughts when you've been covering women's football extensively and uh, where does this go ahead? Because all we do is rave about uh, the the rankings. Oh, women's football ranking is so good. Probably now, it, now the whole pressure or the eyeballs on uh, women's football. Okay, may, maybe they'll be the first to represent uh, India in the World Cup and not the men's. Uh, so, where is all of this leave and and like I said in the start, right? Again, like you mentioned, it's the ones who are really invested in it are embarrassed with the whole thing. But where do you see a harsher, I don't know what to call it, a punishment or something, you know, uh, an action taken against the federation for not looking into uh, the women's football? India is too lucrative a market for any sort of punishment to be meted out so yeah i mean p- punishment wise nothing really but uh, um in terms of i'm like i what jenny said you know this kind of i don't think people really see a light at the end of tunnel at the at the moment because uh it's everything is just about uh putting up an image about uh throwing words out there but not really you know backing them up um uh, it's just it, it's it's a very confusing atmosphere according to me i feel everyone involved in the system is just confused about it nobody really knows exactly how things are done what is to be done and like how we just talked about i mean as long as if you don't have a calendar if you don't have a set schedule of at least what you're going to be doing this season it's very difficult to execute things i mean even in on part of the federation uh, they are going to find it difficult to execute things if you don't put the plan in stone there are obviously changes nobody is saying that what you put on paper it it will be followed as is there are lots of factors uh, in the women's game in the country so there are going to be changes here and there but if you don't have a plan in front of you how are you going to plan uh, for what you for plan about your actions or see how you're going to execute things that's the most important thing i feel that the federation to should look at obviously all the onus is not on the federation but the onus of leading and showing the way is definitely on the federation so if they don't do that i don't see anything bubbling down to the state associations or the almost non-existent district effect. so uh it's it's all just at the moment it's all really up in the air it's all just words and there's way too much work to be done from the ground up for the game to go anywhere the dreams of the world cup is all just going to it's all just dreams uh i i mean we don't even like we're not even good enough in asia i mean i don't even i don't even understand how people even talk about the world cup I think the whole hashtag kick off the dream means uh, here the dream is to host the tournament, you know, and the dream is only about the federation because at the end of the day, they are the ones coming up with the hashtag. Uh, Because anyway, before even players start dreaming or stakeholders, investors start dreaming, the dream is cut off with uh, either saying, oh, I mean, and now we have a good excuse as well, the pandemic and the virus. But, uh, but. 
that's about it right i think that's where it, it lies kick off the dream would be it's their dream of hosting tournaments one after the other just like jenny mentioned there's a tick box so it's a tick box uh, tick you know a tick box for even hosting the number of tournaments under a set person or whatever yeah that's true i mean um i like and again it's just really short sightedness if you feel that a hosting a big ticket tournament is going to make everything all right it doesn't happen like that uh, i i i don't see why they can't look at the look at the countries beside us like they can't look at malaysia they can't uh, look at uh, vietnam they can't look at japan um i mean i feel in asia itself we have so many examples of how we can actually go about it and improve our national team by improving the league system and you know improving just local football uh i don't understand why these examples cannot be taken into consideration obviously i mean you can't pick up a plan from japan and execute it as is in india obviously the dynamics are really different but i mean you can have some sort of uh some sort of plan to look up to to work around so i don't know why these examples cannot be taken it's just yeah i mean they look at big ticket tournaments as i think it, i like i mentioned i think it's all about just the image because that is what big ticket tournaments give you i mean at this rate uh, if this is if this uh, same thing get, i mean continues then we'll only be uh, participating in all these big tournaments by virtue of being hosts not you know by proper qualification yeah and i think that that itself robs a lot of uh, performance talks by our players you know from our from our players we'll only be talking about just like we mentioned in in one of our earlier podcasts with abrishman and arko that it's time that we speak talking about uh, change the narrative to talk about their performance but here we are left with still talking about their stories their journey and how it went to because how do we talk about performance if they don't play so where is all the matches where are all the games that we see them in action so that we can all speak uh, about how good our players are and what potential that they hold my final question to both of you is if we we know that there won't be a next indian coach at least for now before the tournament but still uh, i would like to ask jenny if you had someone in your mind and if you had to appoint a women's coach team the national team coach if it's from an indian contingent who would you uh want to see take over after memol i really like amruta arvind um she was the coach of sedu fc when they uh, won the iwl um and she has a very good rapport with the players um and you know she is someone who who's really good uh, at what she does so she would be my choice abrishmana uh, what about you yeah uh, apart from like i do uh, kind of agree with uh, jenny about amruta but apart from her even priya pv could be looked at because i think uh, yes she had uh, an a sort of an all star team but then she did uh, make them play well and set up well i mean smartly i would say to their strengths as well so yeah even priya pv would make a decent coach i feel Great. Let's hope that one day we get to see both of these coaches, or either of one, either of them, take up, uh, take up the banter, or bantam of, uh, you know, taking up uh, as a role of a coach for the women's team and uh, national women's team, and it'll be great just to see how that goes. We can only hope, and that's all we can do. Uh, but before I let go and before I uh, end the show, I just like to say, like I started saying that the whole buzz. is olympics at the moment and a great i think it's a, this is another great and rightly so not taking away anything from our athletes but this is also a time of cover up for certain federations to bury this under the rugs less like jenny mentioned that you know it's all about covering up for the image and what they did after the whole outrage this particular show coming out in this particular time is just to continue with the buzz about and uh, about how it's a mess that women's football in india is and uh, you know uh, so that the conversation continues and it doesn't get lost uh, in a midst of things so i would like to thank jenny and abrishmina who've taken time out and for doing this show abrishmina you were caught up with covering olympic games and jenny it's a working day and still you managed to uh, come on the show thank you so much this was like probably going to school 
and getting a good lesson because you guys really in detail gave out a lot of uh, information and i mean your points were bang on so i hope and i everyone tunes into this and uh, apart from enjoying from it also takes a lot of learnings especially if both of you i think once the show is out you all should share it among your contact list whoever is part of the federation or whoever needs to listen to this this share with them uh we can only hope that some things will be, get better from here on thank you so much once again jenny and abreshpuna for joining on the show uh thank you so much for all the knowledge for the covering for the coverage that you guys do keep doing so even i get schooled and even i get uh, a lot of informations from you guys thank you once again and to all the listeners thank you guys for tuning in to the totally indian football show episode number 20 as i said continue speaking about this continue ranting whatever it is that you want to do uh don't let this conversation die off and don't let the federation win again we need to uh do our bit as well do follow and subscribe to our show on audio platforms like spotify itunes and we're also on humans of indian football uh youtube channel so do check that out subscribe to our channel and follow guys thank you so much for the love and appreciation continue following us i am your host suju signing off thank you